I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to start a YouTube channel on a budget. Starting a YouTube channel can feel daunting, especially when you go over on YouTube and you see all these professional looking videos where the lighting looks amazing, the audio sounds crisp, and it just makes you wonder like how much money has actually gone into creating this video. It must be quite a bit and it can be a little bit off-putting, especially when you're on a budget. Don't let the fear of how much it must cost to start a YouTube channel stop you from actually starting a YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for a good few years and this is actually my second channel. So I would say I've got a bit of experience when it comes to starting on a budget and also upgrading. So I really want to talk about how you can set up your YouTube channel on a budget. If you haven't started your YouTube channel yet, then you probably don't have any subscribers, which means that you don't actually have a lot of people that you need to impress with big budget productions or anything like that. So you can rest assured, not so many people are going to see your videos when you first, first start out. I didn't want to throw a whole load of money into YouTube when I didn't even know whether it was going to work for me. So trust me when I tell you that every single YouTuber out there has ended up starting probably around here and then upgrading as they've gone along throughout their YouTube journey. We've all started from somewhere on YouTube, whether it be at different budgets, but we have all improved over time. And as we've grown, we've reinvested back into our channels to upgrade equipment. So not everyone actually started out with amazing videos, with amazing lighting, amazing audio. So let's talk about how we can get you started on YouTube on a budget with things that you probably already have. Don't forget that if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Let's get started with this video. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about is what you're actually gonna take your videos on. Now, it can be really daunting when you start thinking about cameras to buy, especially when you think about the whole setup of the camera, the color grading that you might have to kind of set up on the camera, getting SD cards. There's a lot involved, like tripods, everything. So what I would really recommend is think about whether you can actually use your phone to begin with, because that will definitely be on a budget considering you already probably have one. Now, I'm not gonna talk about which phone is best for cameras because I've always had majority of the time I've had an iPhone and mine is the iPhone 14 plus it's actually really good at taking video even the audio is good on it so I would personally recommend starting with your phone if you are on a budget and the newer the phone the better quality your video is going to be anyway so if you have even an Android or whatever phone it is that you have I can't speak for what the quality is going to be like but I do feel like phones have just got so much better when it comes to the quality of video and pictures so I feel like if you have a phone if you have a mobile mobile and it's a pretty recent one, you could probably take really good video on that. Plus then you don't have to worry about getting an SD card and things like that. I would recommend checking your settings on your phone. So if you are going to be taking video on your phone, have a look at your settings and look at the quality that you've got it set at. I have my iPhone video settings set at 4K at 30 frames per second. Now the reason for that is because 4K is going to be the best quality you're going to get out of your phone. And also I would say majority of videos now on YouTube are at 4K. Secondly, 30 frames per second is something that is generically acceptable across any kind of platform online. So if you decide to utilize that same video and kind of like chop it up and use it on shorts, for example, or Instagram reels, you could still use that. There wouldn't be any lagging or anything like that with it or any kind of like jit like sometimes videos can jitter when you don't have the correct frames per second set according to what the platform accepts or prefers. Now, if you're gonna be using your iPhone as your camera, I would recommend going onto Amazon and getting yourself a good tripod for your iPhone. To be honest, on Amazon, you can find things at a pretty decent price anyway. And the good thing is because you're using your phone and you're getting a tripod for it, you can use that for other things like creating content for Instagram or your shorts and things like that. So it's gonna come in handy other than just filming for YouTube. You do have some really good options around for iPhone tripods because you can get the ones that kind of close up like into this small compact kind of travel friendly set and it's really easy to just kind of like keep it all compact but then open it up when you need to and you have some which kind of like bend over the tripod kind of bends down so that you can really get like a flat lay overlay as well like view which is really good there's so much available nowadays so if you just research properly online you're going to find yourself a really good tripod at a good price what I would recommend is before before you actually get 
your tripod, think about what your setup is going to be. Because if you just go ahead and buy a tripod and actually it need, it's too small or it needs to be put on a table and you maybe are going to be standing for some of your videos, it's not going to work well. So it's going to be quite a problem. I've been in this position myself. So you really want to make sure that you do get a tri tripod that is either able to extend to your eye level and also a lot shorter. So maybe you could just like sit down on a table like I am at the moment. So you really want to think about what different kind of setups are you going to have for your videos. Next up is audio. Now this is something which is really important and I do feel like if you are going to be using your phone you're going to get really good audio anyway but you can purchase extras that you can use on your phone just to just kind of like bump up the audio so it just gives you a bit more of a crisper finish. I really love the Rode video mic which is actually specifically for the iPhone so it just slots in right under the iPhone, plugs in really well and it's so small as well so you can just take it along with you wherever you go and that just make just takes up your audio a notch and it makes it a bit clearer but you don't have to have that that is just if you have the option and maybe it fits within your budget and you can go for that too but otherwise honestly I would say that the audio on the iPhone is pretty good on its own if you are opting for a separate camera and maybe you already have a video camera that you use and you do want to improve the quality of the audio then I would still recommend going for something like Rode because I do feel like that is probably the best quality around however you do get other options on Amazon as well where you can just go ahead type in wireless audio and you're going to get a really good option which is a bit more kind of affordable than maybe the Rode microphones around lighting let's talk about lighting because that's something that i actually find really important as well as the audio i feel like every aspect of this is important but lighting for me is pretty important i just feel like it's really important to have a good kind of like bright area and you're set up in the right kind of space with good light coming in and if you don't then obviously use external lights i for example on my other channel which is focused on beauty set up in my studio and there's not a lot of like natural light coming in so i do have to use a lot of external lights so that i can actually get the good bright light so that viewers can actually see the makeup application that I'm doing and they can really like see every part of my face clearly. When I'm filming for this channel, I'm not so fussed about there being like even light all the way around. In fact, I actually do want more of a natural kind of light. So I do use daylight in this room and I'm lucky that I do have windows that are floor to ceiling. So I do get a lot of that light. Plus it's always sunny in Dubai. So you don't really have, have to worry about clouds and things. That's the only worry that I have with, with using daylight, like natural light. So it does depend on where you live. Like is the weather going to be pretty predictable. The only problem with natural lighting is that if there are clouds, you know, the lighting can kind of fluctuate and you really do see it when you're editing your video. As much as my personal opinion is natural lighting is always best. You look the best in natural lighting. You may have to think about getting an external light. So something like a softbox or something to use just in case, or even alongside your natural lighting. Think about where you're going to be filming, which room within your house or wherever you're going to be filming, where are you going to be doing it? Where are you going to be facing? And don't just think about, okay, I'll face this way because the light is amazing here. Because then you've got to think about the background. Does the background look good? So these are all things that you need to think about. But when it comes to lighting, think about where within your space you have a decent amount of lighting, which is natural that you could use without having to opt and purchase a separate light. Now, if you don't have that and you do feel that you need to actually buy a light, then I would recommend again going on Amazon. Amazon's your best friend when it comes to getting anything on a budget for YouTube. Head over to Amazon, find some good soft boxes you usually get like really cheap soft boxes and actually they work pretty well I personally used to have it when I first started out and it works perfect the only downside of that is is that tripods can obviously take up a lot of space so really think about where you're going to be filming within your space before you actually go in and just purchase a whole load of lighting you can get sets on Amazon which is really great because it's just much cheaper you get a whole set but the problem is is it does take a lot of space the minute you open up that tripod and those legs come out that's when you realize how much space it actually takes honestly the most space taken within my studio is from lights literally that is it so I would honestly think about that before you actually commit to purchasing any kind of lights online think about your space think about your setup first and then think about do I have the space for this and if not let me just go for the one that I can just pop along in that little corner there so that I have the light but it's also not taking too much space up 
Let's talk about background. Now that's really important because that is something that people are gonna see within your video. You're gonna be sitting there or standing or however your layout is and people are gonna be looking at what is in the background. <laughs> you wouldn't even realize how many people actually notice things in the background. I know I do as well when I'm watching other videos and I actually really love when I see really clean, crisp videos where everything is very neat, tidy, not too colorful. It's just neutral enough or colorful enough that you still stand out in the video because I don't want anything distracting in the background. I like my videos to look for this channel anyway, very kind of like homely. And that is exactly what I've done. I may move a few little bits here, like move the plant into frame or put my laptop and things out. But I actually use these while I'm filming because I'm looking at what my bullet points are. You know, what do I need to do next? What's on my agenda when it comes to filming? So these are all important for me, including my microphone. Whatever else is going on in the background was already there, you know? So I've picked a spot within this room, which I know is aesthetic is appealing it looks neutral it's not distracting at all and it looks pleasant i hope so anyway so yeah so you've really got to think about what your background is what works well with what you're actually talking about does it actually fit with what you're discussing or could it be a bit better if you feel that you don't really want to show any kind of background then you could opt for just a plain white wall or just whatever your wall color is as long as it's not too dark you do want something which is bright personally i would recommend white just because it's clean it's crisp and the light can actually bounce off that white as well and just make it look just a bit more kind of brighter in the room as well. Think about what you're talking about in your video. What is it about? For example, if you're talking about how not to be messy and how you're very organized and then your background is very messy, the viewer isn't really going to trust your advice, right? They're going to see the background. They're going to be like, this person does not know what they're talking about. I really don't want to take their advice. So you've got to really make sure that it fits in nice with your video. Or the other alternative is you could get a backdrop again the only problem with this is that it does take a lot of room it does it's the same thing as having lights up you have the tripod as soon as you open those legs up they're just going to take up so much space and do you really want that equipment just laying around in your house or wherever you're going to be filming unless you have a room dedicated to use as a studio it can be really annoying and trust me again i've been through all this so i totally understand wanting to keep your space separate from your filming because ultimately youtube is great fun and great as a job but i don't want it to be in my personal space all the time so i have a dedicated room just for youtube when i'm filming for this channel i do move things around but i make sure that i film a few video videos in a go so that I'm not kind of on a daily basis moving things in and out that I know that I'm done for like a couple of weeks or so but honestly I would sit and think about whether it, there is a space within your home or wherever you're filming that you could actually use that as a background and the great thing with working in somewhere like your home apartment wherever is that there are so many different backgrounds you could use for different videos so you could always change it up so that it doesn't get so boring next thing you're going to need is a laptop or a computer desktop computer whatever you want to call it you are going to need that to edit but you've really got to think about are you going to be doing it are you going to be outsourcing your editing if you're looking to do this on a budget then genuinely i would recommend learning how to edit yourself it is a skill that you're going to love i can guarantee eventually you're going to end up loving it it can be a bit confusing to begin with but you are going to love it i used to edit all my videos myself and i still do to a certain extent my husband also edits as well so and he's come from the background which like is not creative whatsoever and if he can do it i feel like like anyone can do it because he's come from the finance industry so he really didn't spend majority of his career editing or doing anything creative like this you can learn to edit it just takes a little bit of time and practice you're going to need your laptop or your computer again whatever you're working from for editing and for creating your thumbnails or you could create your thumbnails on your phone too now the easiest way and cheapest way for you guys to actually create your thumbnails is to get something like canva it's a great platform to create your your thumbnails on they have so many like hundreds and hundreds of templates to choose from and you can change things around you can even opt for the vip version which just means that you pay a little bit and you get access to the whole site but to be honest if you're doing this on a budget you can just start with the free version i started with the free version and it really did help upgrade my thumbnails it's only later on in my youtube journey that i then upgraded to the paid version but it really really does help because especially when you are unsure as to how that thumbnail should look and you're just not feeling creative it can really help you just 
just have so many different templates to choose from. So that's what I would use for your thumbnails. It's free, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop, wherever you wanna do it. When it comes to your editing, for editing your videos, I would recommend iMovie because it's something that's free, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop too. It's pretty easy to use. I would say that it's one of the easiest editing softwares to use. It is very basic. Now in comparison to things like Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, it's definitely basic. But honestly, if you're doing this on a budget, you don't wanna get started with something like that first because if you have no experience when it comes to editing, then that's gonna feel a little bit like overwhelming for you. I would 100% recommend starting with iMovie first, getting a few videos done because really all you need to know is how to like cut, put two clips together, maybe the odd few transitions which are already built into the whole platform anyway. Export and you're good to go. Once you've learned how to use iMovie properly, you can then think about upgrading to software like Final Cut Pro or something like that. But initially I would highly recommend using iMovie. It's exactly what I started on. It was fine. My videos were really good. They were very basic in comparison to what they are now. It is good and it's definitely something I would recommend for anyone starting on a budget. So let's do a recap of everything that you're going to need to start your YouTube channel on a budget. Camera, tripod, possibly audio, good lighting, good background and your editing. So I hope this has helped you today and I hope you've managed to take some tips and tricks away from that. If you are a new YouTube channel, I would love to hear about you. Please do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to come and check out your channel and see how you're doing. If you have any questions about how to set it up, anything, any questions about today's video, let me know in the comments box below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.